What's up guys, it's Zach and today I have a side-by-side -side comparison slash competition between Canon's Rebel T5i and Nikon's D3400. Now if you order these cameras, they come with these things right here. You have your net strap, your battery and battery charger. Canon's battery charger does come with an extension cord. Nikon's is a direct wall mount. And then you have your owner slash user's manual. Now looking at the cameras themselves, the T5i is a little bit bigger. It has a 3 inch articulating screen on the back as well as your basic buttons for most DSLRs. On top you have your modes, stroller, shutter are all up here as well as your on off and video. You have a hot shoe for a flash or microphone. They all do have built in flashes but if you wanted to add your own. On this side you have your HDMI and mini USB as well as your port for remote and a microphone. On the bottom you have your tripod mount, battery slot, and SD card is over here on the right. Front all you have is your lens detach button and your flash, that's about it. Um, very similar to the Nikon, Nikon's is a little bit smaller and some of the buttons might be in different places but it's still the same concept. Um, 3 inch LCD screen, on top you have your modes as well as your on off right here. Your record button for video is right there as well. Bottom tripod again, battery again, side is your SD card slot again. And the other slide is your HDMI and micro USB. And note that this one does not have a port for a microphone or remote. Now those are the technical, physical characteristics. Um, both are very similar in price and a common entry level DSLR. Now we're going to get into the technical specifications to see the difference between these two. So with the technical side of things, um, before we get into all the numbers, I do just want to say that the T5i was released early of 2013 while the D3400 was released early of 2016. So there is a three year technology gap, but even with that these two are still very computable against each other. So the Canon, um, the T5i starts off at $599 with a 18 to 55 millimeter lens and you also have the option of upgrading it to a $799 version that comes with the 18 to 135 lens like you see here. The D3400 starts off at $499 with the 18 to 55 and $599 with the two lens kit which includes the 18 to 35 and a 70 to 300 like you see here. Um, the camera specifications, the T5i has an 18 megapixel CMOS sensor, the D3400 has a 24.2 megapixel CMOS sensor. T5i is ISO ranges from 100 to 12,800, the Nikon's 100 to 25,600. Both of them shoot at 5 frames per second max. Both of them have between a 1 and 4,000 second to a 30 second shutter speed. The T5i has 9 autofocus points while the D3400 has 11. Both of them feature live view. The T5i has a 2 or 10 second self timer. The D3400 has a 2, 5, 10 and 20 second self timer. Both of them have the same viewfinder of 95%. Video side of things, um, the T5i shoots at 1080-30 for 20 minutes, D3400 1080-60 for 20 minutes. Hardware and software specifications, they each have a 3 inch monitor but the T5i has a flexible monitor that can be positioned however you want it. The D3400 is fixed. Both of them have lithium ion batteries but many have said that the T5i has below average battery life. Um, the T5i does not feature Bluetooth or Wi-Fi sync. The D3400 features Bluetooth sync to a smart device. Um, the T5i, mini USB and mini HDMI out. The D3400 has a micro USB and mini HDMI out. The T5i does have ports for microphone and remote that the D3400 does not. The dimensions between them, the T5i is a little bit bigger. It is 5.2 inches wide, 3.9 inches deep, and 3.1 inches tall. The D3400, 4.9 inches wide, 3.9 inches deep, and 3.0 inches tall. The weight is a little bit heavier with the Canon coming in at 18.5 ounce body and a 14 ounce body for the D3400. So in my opinion, on paper, it looks like the D3400 wins. 
Um, it beats the T5i in many important features, but now we are putting it to the real test and going into the yard to get some side-by-side -side comparison shots of each of these cameras. So with these pictures, we have Nikon on the left, Canon on the right. The settings are going to stay the same throughout. And these are all the unedited pictures straight from the cameras to the computer here for you guys to see. So right away, it looks like maybe the Canons is a little bit brighter, maybe a little more vibrant than the Nikons, even though the settings are the same. Um, this next one are very similar. Again, you could say maybe that the Canons is a little bit brighter, but the colors look exactly the same. They're both nice and focused right on this flower, background nice and blurry. Um, both of these fairly good pictures here. Um, after this, I moved down from 50 millimeters down to 18 millimeters, dropped the aperture to 3.5. Uh, again, focusing on this flower, the background's a little bit blurry, um, but I started to notice this blue tint on the Canon's picture. If you look on the wall in the back, on the back right of that picture, it looks almost bluish, and that becomes very obvious in these next few pictures. I'm not sure how that happened, but here on this flower against the wall, the wall is obviously blue compared to Nikon's which was a lot more realistic for the time. I'm not sure how that happened. The white balance and color settings were exactly the same between these two cameras. So I'm not sure how that happened, but for these outdoor pictures that did stick around, especially this next one again. I shot a picture of the sky and clouds with the both of these cameras and the Canons having that blue tint it looks obviously bluer, but I think that blue tint actually helped out in this picture because the sky is supposed to be blue, so it kind of pumped out that blue color. I think the Canon's picture here does look a lot nicer than the Nikon's. Um, this next one, though, I found this wind chime on my patio, took a picture of it. The Nikon's a lot warmer, maybe a more rustic tone. The Canon's having that blue tint, um, it kind of pops that turquoise out a little bit. Um, I like both of these pictures. I think they're both unique in their own ways and pretty good. Um, after that though, I grabbed my Rubik's Cube to see if this color shift would apply to the warmer colors like this orange and yellow here. And it's not really noticeable on the Rubik's Cube itself, but the foreground and background are obviously blue on the cannons if you look at the sandstone and then kind of that tree in the back. Not sure what that was about again, but um, this next one though was at night. The moon was out and bright. So I went out and took a picture of the moon at 135 millimeters, which is not that zoomed in for shooting a moon but it's the most they had in common so um, looking at the picture I do like the cannons again here um, even though having that blue tint I think it kind of tones down the brightness and I think the Nikon's might be a little bit overexposed for the moon um, but after that though the sunset was perfect um, the cannons again having that blue tint but I like them both here I think that blue kind of makes a nice picture here for the cannon it kind of fades from that blue into the yellow and then the Nikon's having that dark bright orange and that really kind of faded look at the top and I think both of these are fairly good pictures and after that the sun went down so I actually took an ISO test to see how the cameras would handle an I high ISO so I started off at 1600 and started increasing it and these first three pictures it's not very noticeable at all but by the last picture it's safe to say that the Canon had more grain in its picture at 12,800 ISO than the Nikon did um, it's probably not going to be obvious for you on the YouTube video, but for me on my computer screen, uh, I zoomed in all the way and you can really see the grain difference between these two right here. Um, but after that, um, Saturday night I shoot photography for Arizona's ABA basketball team, the Arizona Scorpions. So I brought both of these cameras out, shot one half with the Nikon, one half with the Canon. So these are some test shots from here. Um, again, so far I'm keeping the same settings, but um, once the game started, they both have different settings, so I'm not going to keep that up. But looking at this picture, again, same settings, indoor shooting here, high ISO. Um, shooting the scoreboard, the Nikons, is a lot brighter compared to the Canons, which was kind of the opposite at the beginning of this. I'm not sure what that's about again, but then I just threw up some pictures throughout the game. Um, if you like these pictures, thank you. Leave it down below. Um, I love shooting for them. They're all cool guys. Um, let me know what you guys think to this video. If you have any questions about the cameras, about me, about the settings, about the basketball, I don't really care. Leave it down below. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day. See you later.